People in science make it ridiculous, myself. They're dishonest. They're, their own intelligence, uh, ex, let's say, directs them into error, and not even the desire to look at truth. They can look at design, staring them in the face. And these guys see this all the time, doing all this research. And do you think they're going to think of intelligence, a supernatural involvement? No. We've got to think evolution. Now we gave evolution intelligence. That's how it happened. Don't ever say anything else. It's got to be evolution. But that's dishonest. Sorry. Sorry. That amino acid folding you mentioned, is that the kind of thing that when it gets folded wrongly, that it's kind of at the base of the cause for chronic wasting disease? And oh, yeah. If, if amino acid doesn't have its proper folded geometry, it will not function the way it's supposed to function. Every amino acid has its critical geometry. I mean, the protein does when, it, when it's combined, okay? Not the amino acids themselves, but the protein. Yeah, that, that's a key thing because if, if those things are malfunctioning, it's going to set off the DNA to malfunction and mutate. And of course, the RNAs are going to mutate more easily than the DNAs because they're more vulnerable. So everything will go haywire. Basically, they have to think that way because if they don't, they don't get funded. Well, I know that. People who, who control the first strings. Yeah. Required them to. Well, I know it very well because I came out of that environment. And, and this whole thing about folding, you haven't even talked about the stereochemistry, the chirality, and how things are right handed and left handed, and that just. Yeah. No, you're a. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. They have to always couch it in such a way that's satisfying to the uh, supporters, you know? I mean, but that, that's not their only reason for doing that. They just have a mindset. If you talk to them personally, I mean, even away from the research support environment, I've talked to many of them, and they just have that mindset, and you can't change their mindset, you know? The devil has hold. <laughs> In the Miller experiment, the blocks mm -hmm. that came out of that, did they have to be pulled out? They, they dropped, they were condensed, but I condensed it down into that trap, and then, Oh, yeah. Well, they pulled them out. You know, they, they washed them out of there. And then they analyzed them, did a wet lab analysis on those components to identify them because they didn't have gas chromatography or anything then. But they have revised just recently the analysis of uh, those products. They still were hanging around. Somebody found the vials over there in the labs. And uh, I just saw a paper not too long ago that they reanalyzed them by gas chromatography. Uh, in mass spectrometry, and they found out that they even had more amino acids in there than what they thought they had, but they were all in small amounts anyway, and they didn't form any proteins. <laughs> they didn't form any peptide bonds for diamino acids, okay? You didn't keep, can't even get a diamino acid. There's no way you can get a pep polypeptide to form protein, you know. It's interesting to note that if you go to the Denver Museum, they, they have actually one of Miller's apparatuses oh. in, the, in the glass box there. Mm -hmm. And the one they put in there does not have a trap. Oh, really? Yeah, in other words, they're concealing from the public the trap because they don't want you to know that without the trap, it wouldn't have worked. Well, you couldn't have recovered the products. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, what's the attitude today? The public is stupid, you know? That's, that's the attitude. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder about this vote that came through recently, what the public really is like. But uh, it's not mine to judge, you know? That's not my business. But, uh, but this is one of the things. Uh, deception everywhere you can put it. Because uh, why? The average individual says, well, the scientists know a heck of a lot more than I do. So consequently, I've got to trust what they say because they know it and I don't. And if the scientists are telling them that, then that's what you believe, right? No, you don't. <laughs> Not if they're dishonest. And the question is to discern 
dishonesty and all that jargon. And I can tell you the bottom line that I found works is this. When you're reviewing that literature and it's talking about origin of things and evolution and so on, you can almost 95 plus percent before you even start reading any of it, going to know exactly where it's going to go, how they're going to talk about it. It's going to all be talked about in terms of evolutionary models. Very rarely do you see any comments made to the contrary. You know, they'll make these comments like, this is an amazing process, and then say something like, isn't evolution marvelous? See, this is amazing. Can't understand it. It boggles the mind. It's too complex. But isn't evolution marvelous? Because it did it. That's the conclusion. What a brain. Or not brains. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thanks a lot. And that's the end of the talk.